Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. My name is Moji. I'm a former atheist converted to Islam, and uh, I do debates with Muslims and non Muslims. With non Muslims, uh, I do debates about uh, whether Islam is a message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. <coughs> and um, with my fellow Muslims, I do debate uh, about um, some fabricated hadiths. Um, and I believe that uh, Bukhari and Muslim are not absolutely Sahih. There are Sahih hadiths. I'm not Quranist. Of course, I have had <coughs> debate with Quranists as well that we have to accept uh, hadiths that uh, are in line with Quran. And um, but anyway, I have had debates uh, on Facebook, um, chatting uh, with my fellow Muslims, and uh, I have asked them many times to uh, have a debate with me, and most of them because they know that they have lack of knowledge. Uh, two brothers um, accepted my challenge uh, and uh, when they saw the hadiths they were absolutely unaware about these uh, kind of hadiths. Particularly um, I'm concentrated on a hadith by Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, it's about uh, stoning adulterers and uh, these two hadiths, uh, I mean they had the same hadith but in both books suggest that the uh, Quran is incomplete. They say that uh, the verse was uh, sent down, but it is not in Quran, uh, the, the verse of stoning. And uh, some fellow Muslim, because they don't find it in Quran, they re uh, refer it to Bible and Torah. So anyway, uh, these two brothers, they had a debate with me, but uh, they accepted that they have lack of knowledge. I am not a knowledgeable person, okay? But if I have the confidence to debate with you, imagine what those people behind me who are able to do. So there is no shortage of people. I would appreciate it if you could find me, one of them. I've been asking for a long time. No, because most of them are not on Facebook. That's the thing. Most of them are... No, are I, have, I have asked them on the Facebook. I have asked them even... Because I'm, I know myself, Alhamdulillah, I'm uh, enough educated to know that this... This hadith is absolutely fabricated. How can uh, the, a verse be missing from Quran? Yes. Such an important verse. Mushtaba, I, I am not an imam, okay? But what yes. I want to do, I, want, I really want to have this discussion with you. So, yes. so, so far, you have given me two hadiths, okay? Yes. The punishment of, you know, uh, stoning. Yes. Right? I'm not saying to disregard the hadith. Okay, because I myself should actually study that hadith before I even comment on it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm telling you, I can't really comment on a hadith that I don't understand. All right? Because although I, I am familiar with it, I haven't studied it. I don't know the authenticity of it because, you know, there are a hadith that are authentic and a hadith that aren't authentic. Yes, brother, but and sorry, once again, I, I interrupt you here because everybody say that... But can I please well, finish my answer? No, though? just uh, one thing, because everybody say Bukhari and okay. Muslim, they are absolutely uh, authentic. They don't say, they say, they don't say that uh, there is uh, un, right. uh, unauthentic uh, hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So that's the, well, my problem. that's my problem. But I, th I, th I think, and I'm, I will humbly say this, but I believe you might not be right on that point, bro. Uh, the reason is that when, when they, okay, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, I fully understand you. The, just because it is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim, it doesn't make it authentic per se. Okay. Right? Yeah. It doesn't make it as a, it doesn't make it an, a, a narration that can be fully implemented. Because there are narrations in both Bukhari and in Muslim which we don't know the actual authenticity level of. I have blurred uh, the face of these two brothers um, because uh, they were not so educated. Myself, I found uh, an imam of the masjid in um, Houston who accepted to answer my question and uh, he agreed that the, the hadith is uh, fabricated, but he didn't uh, say that it is fabricated. He said that it is falsely reported, which make it, of course, uh, fabricated anyway. So Bukhari, according to him, put a false hadith in his book, uh, a hadith that uh, has killed hundreds of people by the most barbaric way, stoning. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm doing well. How are you doing? 
Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for um, uh, accepting our invitation. Okay. Uh, could you please uh, tell me you are Imam in some mosque or? Yes, I'm Imam for Masjid Mustafa Bear Creek in Houston, our, in the United States. Uh, yeah, very nice. Uh, good. Um, yeah, brother, um, I saw that you answer questions. So um, I I say a little bit about myself that um, I'm a former so-called apostate. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. At the age okay. of yes, at the age of 25, I started to think about existence of God. So uh -huh. because of lack of knowledge, I came to this conclusion that you know God doesn't exist. So I became atheist. But uh, Alhamdulillah. Um, I got time and then I learned, studied, and then I realized that I was wrong. So I converted to Islam. I found out that Islam is the perfect message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I converted to Islam. And uh, since I've converted to Islam, I've been reading, studying as well. And uh, there are certain things that uh, I have had discussion with, uh, you know, um, Islamophobics and fellow Muslims at the same time as well is that uh, everybody attack Islam uh, because of uh, some hadiths, okay? Those who, Islamophobics attack Islam because of hadiths. And some fellow Muslim have seen that uh, unfortunately, they, they follow things that uh, without any knowledge actually, you know, just they follow imams and uh, scholars without even thinking themselves. <clears throat> because you mentioned Bukhari and Muslim, okay? Because a lot of uh, fellow Muslims, they, when you question them, they say they reject you right away as if as you have uh, <clears throat> questioned Quran. They say it is next to Quran and they are absolutely uh, Sahih, despite they are contradicting Quran. Despite they yeah. contradict Quran, they, um, you know, so um, it is my question, for example, there is a Hadith um, in uh, Muslim and Bukhari. Uh, mm -hmm. Sahih Muslim book 017 number 4194 it says that Abdullah bin Abbas reported that Umar bin Khattab sat on the uh, pulpit of uh, Allah's messenger peace be upon him and said verily Allah sent Muhammad peace be upon him with the truth with truth and he sent down the book upon him means Quran <clears throat> and the verse of stoning was included in what was sent down to him. We recited it, retained it in our memory and understood it. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, awarded the punishment of stoning to death. And after him, we also awarded the punishment of stoning. I'm afraid uh, we, uh, that with time, the lapse of time, the people may forget it and may say, we do not find it, uh, the punishment of stoning in the book of Allah. And though go astray by abandoning this duty prescribed by Allah, stoning is a duty laid down in Allah's book for married men and women uh, who committed adultery when proof is established. So this hadith plus uh, uh, the same hadith is in Bukhari as well, okay? If this hadith say that this verse came down, it was in Quran, but we don't find it today in Quran. So it, and unfortunately, this hadith says that Quran is incomplete because there is a verse which missing in Quran, okay? And uh, I have asked people and people uh, you know, say that, oh, you don't understand and because language is uh, information. When I say horse, you understand right away what I'm talking about, brother. You cannot interpret it, you cannot change it. Say, no, no, he's talking about dog or he's talking about the tree. No, horse, when you say one word, ho word horse, it gives a lot of information. And when this hadith says that it was there, it came down, we memorized it, but it is not in Quran, means that the, the verse is missing there, okay? So, and Quran says that, um, you have to slash them 100 lashes but hadith is the no stone them to death okay and uh, so this is what i would like to ask you why the hadith says that if this uh, bukhari and muslim are so um, you know uh, sahih that everybody say then why it says that the verse is missing in quran now 
as for the verse, uh, as for the hadith of stoning, uh, just to be academic with you, I'll, there's 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 two sides to this, right? Side one who says this hadith is authentic because it's in Bukhari Muslim, so we have to act on it. So what they say about this hadith is that uh, so the Quran has verses, different types of verses. Some verses are called nasikh and mansukh. Nasikh means Yes, you probably uh, you're aware oh, of this discussion. Abrogator. Yes, I know. Right. The abrogation and the, uh, the abrogation or the abrogated and the abrogator, right? So they say that abrogation is of few types. One type of abrogation is where the verse is deleted and the recitation and um, the, the recitation of the verse is deleted along with its uh, action implementation. Other, other nasikh is the recitation is not deleted. It's left in the Quran, but we will not act on it. And there's multiple verses like that. For example, obviously, the verses of like alcohol. And the third type, which is a very rare type, is that the recitation is deleted, but the implementation is not. So they, the scholars, they say this is the type that Umar is referring to, that the recitation of it is deleted, but the implementation is not. Now, this third type of abrogation, it logically speak, so this is what they say. The other side says, this third type of abrogation, it makes no sense because there's no objective to it. Either you delete the verse and the meaning, or you can say the verse will remain because it's revelation, but through other reports and other verses, we will uh, say this verse is not implemented anymore. But why would God take me to task on the day of judgment when he has sent me a book, and in that book, I don't find it. And then he says, no, but I told you to, I, but you were supposed to know it. So it, logically, it does not make sense, right? So that's another thing. So this report about stoning. Now, it, it's interesting. It does, it, does, it does come in multiple. So here's the thing. Here's the Islamic juristic um, uh, uh, way even now, or anywhere where Islamic uh, hudud take place, right, where the capital punishment takes place, as soon as there is any sort of doubt in the, in, this, in the crime occurring, right, you cannot establish the capital punishment. For example, if there was doubt that man A was at woman B's house, if there's even doubt, then no, you can't go through, you can take them through trial, but to put punishment on, the judge will say there seems to be doubt in this particular matter, we can't establish the punishment. Doubt means even a small amount of doubt. What is interesting is all these reports that actually speak about uh, stoning, none of these reports are in the Quran the most authentic, without a doubt. They're not in this type of hadith, which are also mutawatir, have no doubt. They're actually either in the singular hadith transmissions, which actually the, even scholars say, these hadith, these reports are such that we believe in them, hopefully that they're true. But there is a chance, there's a doubt that they might not be true because of human error. All of the reports are coming from such reports, or from such, uh, all these hadith about stoning are coming from reports, which in themselves, there's a, slight, there's a slight amount of doubt. Not much, not saying, oh, this is absolutely wrong, but there's speculation. And the moment there is speculation in a capital punishment, you can't accept it. You can't, you can't go through with it. So how will a, any jurist who is trying to implement stoning through a report which itself is doubtful, is it, that's a, <coughs> that's a par that, that cannot happen. So the evidence in itself is not sufficient enough to carry this out. One of the brothers, uh, finally, he found a, a scholar, uh, a sheikh from Saudi Arabia who is uh, living in exile in uh, UK. His name is Sheikh Muhammad Masari, and uh, I had a debate with him, and unfortunately, he is not sharing the video with me because um, I think he is shame because he lost the debate actually, and he it is uh, nearly now uh, 20 days that I'm asking them for the video so that I can share it with others, and uh, they don't give it to me, and they are not publishing it uh, themselves. Um, um, and this sheikh, he was suggesting uh, that uh, Omar radiallahu made a mistake. The verse came down, but the verse uh, was abrogated later. 
and he was he made a mistake. He didn't know that the verse uh, has been abrogated. So he drive over uh, Omar radiallahu to save uh, Sahih Bukhari or so called Sahih Bukhari. He made Omar radiallahu uh, uh, an ignorant who didn't know that the verse is. Uh, of course, my point is that. Uh, there was no such a verse ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow us to uh, stone anybody to death because there is no difference between uh, stoning people to death or burning people alive as uh, Christians are doing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow such a barbarism and these people, they just uh, find excuses uh, to say that Bukhari is sahih. Please, if you know someone who think it, he's educated enough to address these uh, uh, questions, uh, I would uh, appreciate it very much uh, if you contacted me and uh, we could have a debate about uh, so-called Sahih Bukhari <coughs> and Sahih Muslim so that we can uh, guide uh, fellow Muslims uh, about such uh, issues because it is very important. Many people have been stoned to death. Many people have been killed because of apostasy. And this is absolutely uh, against the Quranic teachings, uh, against the, the religion of the, the most merciful and forgiving God. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. Jazakallah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum.